in the last stream, we were working on getting our first resourceful bees and breeding those together to get our first iron bee. And then we did a bit of work to get this iron bee nectar block, allowing our iron bee to produce iron honeycombs for us, which we can now harvest with our ceramic shears and place into our manual centrifuge to get not only iron, but also beeswax and honey bottles. And since the end of the last stream, I have done a little bit more honeycomb processing. You'll see we have quite a bit of beeswax in here. We also have quite a bit of iron and we've got quite a bit of honey. We did also get some more cobblestone, but I've mostly been running that through the crushes over here to get more sand and more gravel. Because as I mentioned at the end of the last stream, one of the first things that I would like to work on in today's stream is moving this hut. I kind of want to get rid of this hut. This was just a temporary setup to allow us to, uh, to use these bees, but I want to move this over to a new area and I want to set up kind of dedicated huts for the different kinds of bees that we're going to be setting up in today's stream. And I was going to do this between streams, but then I realized that uh, we actually do have the chisel mod installed. And so if we do this and this, we can get ourselves a standard iron chisel. And using the standard iron chisel here, we can customize the look of different blocks in the game just to mix things up a little bit so that we don't have the standard oak plank and uh, oak log look throughout our base going forward. You'll see that if we put the oak logs into the chisel, again, just right click to open this up, we have a bunch of different options of woods that we can choose from. And then essentially all you have to do is select the block that you want, and then you can go ahead and place these blocks down. Nice. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the different options for chisel blocks in here. It does use some durability on the chisel, so uh, probably best to not do what I just did and uh, do a whole stack at a time just for demonstration purposes, but we can get as much iron as we like really at this point and getting more chisels isn't gonna be too difficult. I am quite interested in the uh, oak plank log cabin thing here that we have going on. This does connect actually, which might look quite nice. I might end up replacing the kind of the edge of the platform with this kind of log cabin effect, especially given that we can use planks to make the log cabin effect log. That's interesting. And then we can kind of just run that along like that. I quite like that actually. I think that's gonna look better than this or at least just a little bit different. However, before we do that, the other thing that I would like to do right at the start of today's episode is I would like to get a very small Tinker's Construct smeltery up and running so that we can look at getting some clear glass because right now we're using the regular Minecraft glass and I don't think it looks particularly good. We can also use a Tinker's smeltery to upgrade our tools further. Right now we just have a stone hand axe and a stone pickaxe. If we want to upgrade those, say to an iron hand axe and an iron pickaxe, that's where we need a smeltery because unfortunately, just using the part builder here, you can't put iron in this. If you want to make the iron into the part you want, like an axe head or a ping axe head, you have to run it through the smeltery. You'll see right here it says cannot shape, material cannot be shaped in the part builder. Other methods such as casting are required. And so to get a Tinker's Construct smeltery is actually not too bad. The quest book does have a section over here. Uh, first of all, we need grout and we need to use that grout to make seared bricks. So the seared bricks are made by smelting grout and grout is simply sand, gravel, and clay. So over here, we've got a stack of sand and a stack of gravel. And in here we have some clay. And I believe that over here, we also have some more clay. We do indeed. Now, another quick detour here. We do now have the ability to make the sink from cooking for blockheads. This right here is essentially an infinite water source block in one singular block without actually having to have the water down. And it's really not too difficult to make. It requires five terracotta with three iron and one bucket of water. Of course, we have a bunch of iron now and we can get even more every time we go and shear this guy, which is actually ready quite regularly. And so we do wanna keep an eye on that and kind of keep shearing it as often as we can. But my thought process here is that we might be able to connect one of these cast iron tubes directly to the sink to provide infinite water to the jars here. And that's going to allow us to make clay a lot faster because right now we have sand in the chest, but we don't have any water, which is why this jar over here isn't able to keep making blocks of clay. I don't know if we're able to connect the sink directly to the pipes and if that's gonna work in the same way that connecting the chest does. But if it does work, that's gonna be very useful. And if it doesn't work, then at some point in the not so distant future, as soon as we have redstone, we should be able to get something like a fluid pipe here to extract water automatically from the sink and pump it 
into one of our pre-existing jars. So let's take all the terracotta. Let's also grab a fresh bucket of water from our current unlimited water source. And then back over here, let's see if we don't have what it takes to make the sink. And then real quick, let's see if replacing, for example, this jar here with the sink doesn't work. So this is done in a second. If I put that there, that looks like it's gonna work. If I press X and start, I think that's gonna work. You'll see that uh, right now, if I take a bucket, I can right click and I can take water out of the sink infinitely. It's got an infinite amount of water in it. And it looks like that infinite water is now accessible via this cast iron tube to this tempered glass jar. And so I think that this system is just gonna keep going and keep making claim until it runs out of sand in here, which is super cool because now we don't have to worry about manually moving the water over to the jar over and over and over again. Back over here though, now that we have that clear, we can do something like this and like this, and we can make a fair amount of grout. And I think we're probably gonna want more than a stack. So I will go ahead and make another stack here and we'll get all of that smelting over in our furnaces. And as soon as that's done, we should be able to start using some of the seared brick. Hold on, can I not smelt this in here? No, I need a blast furnace. Interesting. I assume that's the pack's way of getting this off until you have iron. Interesting. Okay, that's actually... Completely fine though, we'll go ahead and we will take, I guess some more cobblestone. We could use one of the pre-existing furnaces that we have, but I feel like we have enough cobblestone here to make some more furnaces. So we'll do this and actually we need way more cobblestone because we need quite a bit of compressed cobblestone in order to make the furnaces. And then we'll take those furnaces and see about upgrading those to blast furnaces. For then, we're just missing some smooth stone. We do have some, unfortunately, not quite enough. Let me go ahead and get uh, four more here. We'll quickly smelt that up, and then that should be everything for the blast furnaces. And once the smooth stone is done, let's do two blast furnaces. For now, we'll put those down right on the top, here and here, and we'll throw a stack of grout into each of those, and we'll also, of course, go ahead and throw some fuel into both of those as well. Boom and boom. Cool. So that is going to produce seared brick for us, and we, and actually it looks like we might want to have one of each of these just to complete this quest. Oh no, of course we can't complete this quest until we complete this quest, which does want us to make a part chest. I don't really think we need the part chest. And I also don't really see the point in the part chest, but the quest wants us to make it. And so uh, real quick, let me craft the remainder of these logs down into planks. Let's get a standard Minecraft chest. And then it looks like we also need to get a few more blank patterns as well. And with that, that should be, I think, everything that we need for the part chest. Nice. The part chest just allows you to store parts that you've made so in here if i were to make a rogue part that i don't need like a pickaxe head i could then store it in here for use at a later date i don't really foresee us having that many excess parts that we want to store for later use but if we do we now have the part chest and uh, we've also completed the quest there which is kind of the main reason that i did it but now we need to make these items right here this is kind of the bare minimum required to make a smeltery you need a smeltery heater a smeltery melter a casting basin a casting table and a faucet we also need to get a uh, controller a tank and at least one drain this wants us to make two uh, the chute i don't know if that's strictly necessary for what we're trying to make but we might make it just to complete the quest and then we need some seared bricks and a seared faucet essentially all of these are kind of made using just seared brick. You'll see that uh, this is just seared brick. This is seared brick with a tank, which is seared brick and glass. This is just seared brick. This is just seared brick. This is just seared brick. Over here, the tank, seared brick and glass, the drain, seared brick and copper, which we actually don't have just yet. Uh, the same for the chute. And then again, the faucets and the blocks are just more seared brick. And so you can see why we've got such a staggering amount of it up here. It does appear that in this pack, we're going to have to make a seared melter before we can make a smeltery, which is actually fine. So let me bookmark these recipes here. For those who don't know, you just press A while hovering over the uh, item to bookmark it, and then it appears uh, permanently on the left. And then from there, we should be able to make a seared heater, just the one, a seared melter. Of course, that does require five glass, which I think we definitely have. I've got 58 in my inventory. That is also something I made more of between episodes. Let's do one of these, and then we just need to get a seared faucet. And I think for now, we might just need a seared basin. I don't know if we necessarily need the seared casting table just yet, but you know what? We've got a lot of seared brick. I'll go ahead and I'll make it, that does also complete the quest. So this one is a fairly basic setup. You place down the seared melter atop the seared heater, something like this, and then you can put down a faucet on any side of the seared melter, and then you can put the basin beneath that faucet. You can also do the same with the casting table as well, but I don't think we're going to need that. Really, all we need this for is the making of the controller, because we need to pull molten copper 
over the seared heater in order to make the smeltery controller. Now, the next question is how do we get a copper B? The copper B is a nickel B and a cobblestone B. And to get the nickel B, it's the iron B and a cobblestone B. So that's actually kind of fine. And also, I believe, is necessary because we then need to use the copper B to get the gold B and the gold B to get the redstone B. No, to get the cinnabar B, which we can then use to get the redstone B. Okay, it's quite the chain. Thankfully, every step of the chain here is 100% guaranteed to give you the B that you want. There's no kind of questioning. There's no ifs. There's no odds. There's no chance that you get like a, a cobblestone B when you breed these together. You're guaranteed to get the gold B, which I'm very happy about. Uh, sometimes mods will make it so that when you breed two Bs together, you have a chance of getting kind of the same B that you started with, which is very frustrating. But for us right now, it should just be a case of giving iron to one of our iron Bs and cobblestone to one of our cobblestone Bs. Those should produce for us a nickel B. And I think we probably want to do that a few times over here. Let's do that again with a different iron B and a different cobblestone B. And then we should also have a, a third iron and third cobblestone B as well. Which one have I not done yet? I've not done you and maybe you. There we go. Perfect. So now we have three nickel bees. The nickel bees can already produce nickel for us in the form of nickel honeycomb. The, uh, the only downside here, the only problem we're going to enter is that we have to wait quite a while for these bees to, uh, to fully grow. Although... If we can get the nickel bees to produce nickel, well, I believe we then can feed the nickel back to the nickel bees to make them grow faster. So for the nickel bees to produce anything, we do need nickel bee nectar blocks, which are cobblestone honeycomb blocks and iron honeycomb blocks. That's actually kind of completely fine. If we go ahead and harvest here, we can start gathering even more of those. And I don't think it should take long at all for us to get enough of them. I think what we might do here then, because it looks like it's going to take us a minute to get to glass. In fact, let me check over here. If I put just regular old sand into the seared melter. Can I then use coal down here or some kind of fuel down here to melt that? I can. So it looks like we probably can make clear glass without the smeltery. The only downside to the melter here is that it's just quite slow and quite small because we can only do uh, three glass at a time and then we can only pull out one block of glass at a time as well, which again, isn't particularly fast. You'll see it takes a little while for this to cool down. And then once it's cooled down, we can then take it out. I do think it's going to look better, but I think we're probably going to want to wait until we have a much bigger smeltery setup to actually get this going. And so for now, I might just build the boxes with something else in the walls, even though it's going to look worse. And then we can look at uh, kind of replacing our glass with clear glass in the future. And uh, just for reference, the clear glass is nice and clear, which is exactly what we're after. I don't think we get it back if we break it. Although that might not be true, actually. We might get it back if we break it. Let me give that a try. I'm going to put a third one down real quick just to show off the uh, the full clearness of the clear glass let's do set one of these perfect and then if i break this do i get the clear glass back i totally do that's very nice indeed cool so real quick then uh, i'm gonna go ahead and expand out the platform this way i'm gonna build a few more slightly larger bee huts to put our bees in and i'm also gonna keep shearing this to try and get enough of the iron and cobblestone honeycomb so that we can make the nickel nectar block and see by getting these uh, nickel bees to grow just that little bit faster. Okay, so we've started building out a, a bridge over here. I'm going to put my new hut over here. We'll probably have one on this side as well, and we'll kind of have a few of them going out as we move forward. But one thing I have decided on doing is putting down more dirt here. We can make more dirt the old-fashioned way. Also, apparently, I've not done a good enough job at lighting up the old side of the base. I've uh, put down torches on this side, but apparently... If I uh, press F7 here, it'll show us the uh, light levels. Apparently, there's not a torch here. That is because we uh, had the water flowing in the last episode, which uh, got rid of the torch that I had here previously. Either way, uh, what I was about to say is that we need a lot more dirt. We could grow more wheat to get more wheat seeds and use our jar to get more dirt. However, uh, the Twitch chat has pointed out that the fast way of doing it here is going to be to place down coarse dirt. And then if you till that coarse dirt, like so you can then just get dirt and then we can pick that dirt up and the idea here is you can craft dirt with gravel to make cost dirt of course we could do here with upgrading our karma i think to upgrade the karma we need a stone sword blade that is completely fine after that we're going to need some cobblestone also not a problem let's take you and then over here boom and Boom, nice. So now it's gonna have a bit more durability and it's gonna be upgradable with cobblestone, which is fantastic. Uh, but we can go ahead and pick all of this up 
like so. And then we can craft this with gravel to get even more uh, coarse dirt. And then we can do the same thing again. We can place it down. I have gone ahead and made an iron wand here, exactly the same as the cobblestone wand, but it uses iron instead of cobblestone. And it can now put down a maximum of 27 blocks at a time, as opposed to the uh, nine, I believe it was, of the stone wand which is a lot nicer. And so this should be a much, much easier way of us getting a large amount of dirt. And of course we can keep putting cobble into the crusher here to get even more gravel. And on top of that, if we really wanted to, we could also go ahead and make another hopper here to kind of automate this process. If we do this and this, we can then just go ahead and put a bunch of cobble into here. And that's gonna get us a ton of gravel fairly quickly that we can then use to make even more coarse dirt, which I'm gonna use over here to kind of fill out the space around the hut because I do wanna be able to access the hut from all the different sides, especially if we do end up having any spewing or if we just wanna do kind of some maintenance work around the bank. Okay, so not too long later, and we're getting there with our little platform here. This ended up being more elaborate than I intended it to be, but I think it's gonna look quite nice in the end. So we've got a seven by seven external five by five internal box here, which is where our bees are going to go. Of course, right now we don't have clear glass. We could make regular glass, but I'm kind of intentionally making this ugly so that we're forced to make the clear glass sooner rather than later. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down cobblestone here for now. And I have lost my old iron wand. We fully broke it. So I'm gonna quickly make a, a new iron wand here if we do something like this and that's going to allow us to very quickly place down all this cobblestone to give us at least a temporary place to put some of the the newbies into so let's do this this and this and we ended up going with seven by seven by five so it's not quite as tall as it is wide and and deep but i think that's fine and uh, we don't really need that much height for the bees here again we're going to do something like this for now we can always replace this with glass or something else in the future and then for now we're going to of course do this and we'll probably put the, uh, the honey blocks in here so that we can walk through it. The honey blocks being the, uh, the honey glass like we have right here. I do believe we have two spare honey glass in here. We do indeed. Let's go and throw those down on the front. And I think we should now be at a point. I'm also gonna put a torch here just to be a little safe on mob spawning on top of that box. But I think we should be at the point where we can now actually make the uh, nickel nectar block. So real quick, let me uh, clear out some space in my inventory. Let's grab our ceramic shears, which I have put away. That's fine. Let's grab all of you perfect and then back over here do we now have 18 of each we don't we've got 17 of the iron and 25 of the cobble so the cobble is done we just need one more iron comb we can also look at upgrading our current hive as well actually because our current hive is tier two however i'm fairly certain that we do now have what it takes to make the uh, the tier three hive for that we just need oh we need four blocks of honeycomb blocks which unfortunately we don't have, right? We're gonna have it, but we're gonna spend those. So we actually don't have it. I do believe we have enough beeswax though at this point in time. We've got a stack and 20. If I were to craft those down into beeswax blocks, we do have enough beeswax blocks to make, uh, in theory, two tier three hives. So we'll do that very shortly. First things first though, let's uh, grab our nickel bees and let's move them over to the new enclosure. And in fact, this is uh, already ready to shear. Nice, okay, cool. So we do now have enough to make the, uh, the nickel block. So let's do this, let's take two of these. And then the only other thing we needed, I think was just some B DNA, which we should be able to do with the extra clay that we now have in here, thanks to that automatic water that we set up earlier. So if I do this, we can get another empty DNA. We can put that in here along with the iron honeycomb and the cobblestone honeycomb. And then hopefully we can now make the nickel nectar block. Let me just check which one this has to be done in. It is done with just a regular heat. Oh, we need honey, of course, not um, not lava and water. That's actually completely fine. We do still have a spare jar, of course, over in here. And I'm also fairly certain that, yes, we do have a spare cast iron tube as well. So we can put that one down over here, like so. And then just like before, we should have enough honey bottles to make yet another bucket of honey which I guess has to be like this. And then we can drop that, of course, just over into here. And that should be everything that we need to get the nickel nectar block. Start. Okay, so one more tier two beehive layer. So we'll put that down right about there. Uh, this time it is facing the correct way. I'm pretty sure that's good. And so now if we go and grab our nectar block, I don't think the fact that this room is incredibly dark is gonna affect the bees. I think they should still work in here. It's obviously not particularly nice, but I think they'll get the job done. If we do, let's say this, and then we release the nickel bees in here, I'm hopeful that those nickel bees should 
begin doing their thing, spinning on the block, and then of course pollinating it and going back to the hive. Uh, just like before, we do need to get a campfire if we're going to harvest uh, automatically. However, I think if we get a scraper from resourceful bees, I believe that using this negates the need for us to have a campfire underneath the beehive. It says right click on tiered beehives to collect honeycomb. So I don't think using this, we actually have to have the campfire underneath. It should work in the exact same way as the shear did. Although I feel like I only got one. Oh, do we have to? Okay. I think we have to right click it more times when using the, uh, the scraper. The good news about the scraper is it seems to not have any durability, which is interesting, but I did have to click five times there. And so that is something we have to bear in mind. But I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that using the scraper, we shouldn't have to, um, we shouldn't have to, to put a campfire underneath. We'll find out. Um, I can't scrape this just yet. Again, I think it does have to be full. Yeah, it says must collect all honeycombs for bees to generate new ones. So once it gets up to five, we can harvest, but we have to harvest one at a time and we have to get all the way to zero before they can, um, can produce more. That is completely fine there's already one out of five honey in there that's going to get uh, made very soon and for now we just want to keep harvesting the iron and cobblestone honeycombs out of here to allow us to produce a uh, higher tier beehive because ideally the next thing that we're going to want to make is that tier three hive another thing that's on the docket of course is the copper bee but if we're gonna get the copper bee we need those uh, first nickel honeycombs and so really at this point it's kind of just a matter of waiting for this here to hit five out of five honey, at which point we can harvest the nickel honeycomb, process it into nickel, and then use that to breed the nickel bees with some of these cobblestone bees. Let me grab three of these out of here. We'll take you, you, and in a second, I guess we'll also grab the last one out of here as well. And that's going to allow us to breed all three of those with all of our nickel bees to get copper bees. At that point, we do need to get a copper nectar block i'm assuming for that we need another two cobblestone honey blocks which we actually already have and two nickel honey blocks so again it's just more nickel bees for them extra nickel bees it might not be a terrible idea just breeding oh gosh yeah okay if that makes sense uh we do need a uh, torch down in there uh, thankfully this guy can't get out <laughs> which is good the bad news is that we can't really get in whilst he's in there and um, i think i, I don't want to lose my bees let me do this and this. Let's try and lure him out, because I don't want to lose my bees, is the thing. Hello. Could you, um, can I persuade you to come this way? I could persuade you to come this way. The bees might escape a little bit. Don't fly off the edge. Don't fly off the edge. Don't fly off the, the idiots. Absolute idiots. Every time they just go straight down. Please come back up. Come back up. Okay, hold on. We might be able to salvage this. If we can get, first of all, let me do this and this. Okay. If we can get some water, we might be able to kind of maneuver our way down to save that nickel bee. Oh, he's back. He's back. Never mind. We've done it. Okay. I really thought he was going to sink into the abyss there. Thankfully, he has not done so. And so we should be good to, uh, to replace him down here and here. This is very almost full. As soon as that fills up, we're going to be good to go. And yes, we can then look at making that uh, nectar block. I was going to say that uh, it's probably going to be a good idea just to breed more nickel bees just so that we can get the uh, the nickel uh, nectar faster so back over here i think once again it's going to be sensible for us to get some cobblestone and breed more of the iron bees here with the cobblestone bees even though they're going to be babies that's perfect because it's going to allow us to uh, to get more nectar because the babies can produce nectar they just can't breed to make other bees and uh, we can thankfully uh, store the baby bees in the jars as well Perfect. Uh, so long, of course, as we have uh, space for it, which apparently we don't have much space left. That's fine. Back over here. I think we should now be good on nickel. Let's release both of these baby bees, babies. And let's also go ahead and using our scraper. Cool. Look at that. They don't get annoyed, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And uh, we actually got eight there, which is fantastic. And so now we should be able to take that over and we can start breeding the copper bees. Of course, getting the copper bees before we get the copper nectar blocks, not particularly useful, but we do want to give the copper bees time to uh, to develop into adult copper bees because, of course, we do want to then take those adult copper bees and use them to get uh, the gold bees so that we can progress forward and try and get towards those redstone bees. And, of course, chat is right. Let me go put a torch down before I forget. That is very sensible. So let's take the eight nickel that we got from centrifuging the nickel honeycomb and then back over 
here. We've got cobblestone and we've got cobblestone bees. So in here, we don't really want the cobblestone bees to produce any cobblestone honeycomb. All we want to do is we want to take the nickel bees and breed them with the cobblestone bees, and that should get us a copper bee. We can do more at once, but I don't want to be very careful here because I don't want to accidentally breed a nickel bee with another nickel bee, because if we do that, then we're going to end up in a situation where we just get more nickel bees, which is not what we want. We specifically want to get as many copper bees as we can so that we can use that copper, ideally for making the smell tree, but also, I guess, for making uh, further bees. And of course, while we're here, let's go ahead and harvest all of this. Perfect. Ah, wait, no, why? Why? <laughs> okay, so they got angry at me, which is not ideal. I was under the impression that wouldn't happen with the scraper, although maybe that's because they were in there at the time. That's not ideal. I'm hopeful. Okay, so all of my bees died, <laughs> which is not ideal. I have gone ahead and put a campfire down underneath the beehive over here so that hopefully that doesn't happen again in the future, but now we kind of just need to do the same process again. Thankfully, it's going to be a little quicker, I think, because we now have this uh, nickel block. So what we should be able to do now going forward is we should be able to uh, take the cobblestone, take the iron. That should allow us to uh, to breed a cobblestone and iron bee together to get a nickel bee. And I'm hopeful that uh, using the uh, nickel honeycomb here, we can, of course, make nickel over in the centrifuge. And then using that nickel, we should be able to accelerate the growth of the nickel Bee. So let's just see about getting one of these cobblestone bees out. And of course, the cobblestone bees, they are on cooldown here. Actually, we've got cobblestone bees here as well, but uh, this one is off cooldown. So let's take you and you. That's going to breed a bee. It's probably not going to take that much time off, but uh, this guy's got 1,200 seconds, which is 20 minutes. If we give him some nickel here, it does bring it down a little bit. Like we've knocked, you know, we cut it in half with like six or seven uh, nickel, which is not terrible. Let's take this guy and let's go put him back in over here because that's going to allow him to keep working on making us more nickel as well which is perfect okay so we're just going to have to kind of keep, <laughs> redo what we just did we might also look at making some more cobble bees as well just so that we can kind of uh, jump the cooldown a little bit because the cooldown on these guys is like five minutes and uh, we kind of might want to skip that if we're going to get more of the nickel bees okay so i rebred the nickel bees we've got quite a few of them now hanging around in here and i've been harvesting this periodically and i've been harvesting the iron and copper honeycombs periodically as well and whilst we've been waiting for them to grow i've been building yet another one of these little beehives over here and we actually have quite a lot of uh, nickel and uh, iron honeycomb and a little bit of cobble as well and so i think now we are good to go here we also have uh, one fully grown nickel bee this guy right here perfect and the rest are just a few minutes away from being fully grown so i'm fairly certain that at this point in time there's a couple of things we can do the first thing we can do is we can take two cobblestone honeycomb blocks along with two nickel honeycomb blocks along with another bucket of honey which is just four honey bottles around our bucket right now we've got a bucket full of water which we no longer need let me deposit that let's craft this bucket with the four honeycomb i'm fairly certain it works with uh, regular buckets as well as clay buckets it does indeed and then we can drop that once again in over here with these guys in here and here and then back in here we should now be able to make the copper nectar block which is this guy copper b nectar block start that is going to be done momentarily then in order to get our first or i guess second lot of copper bees all we need to do is put the uh, nickel honeycomb back in here get a little bit of nickel this is mildly faster if you click rapidly than just holding uh, shift and right click it goes a little quicker if you click quickly but uh, either way once we have a little bit of nickel and some cobblestone we can once again take our cobblestone bees out from in here and we can go and get our first copper bees the benefit that we're going to have this time around is that one we've got a campfire underneath our hive which is uh, is good it means that we're not actually going to uh, lose our copper bee but on top of that we also now have over here ideally our first nectar block or we will have our first nectar block in 15 seconds which again is going to allow us to get the uh, copper honeycombs which you can then use of course to make copper and with that copper, we can accelerate the speed of the copper bee if we like, if we uh, find that is something we want to do. And of course, we can actually start making copper, which is going to allow us to build that larger smeltery. So let's take that copper nectar block. Let's go ahead and place it in over here, like so. And yeah, as soon as another one of these nickel bees is ready to go, I'll breed that with another one of our cobblestone bees. In fact, it looks like that's going to be 11 seconds away, which is perfect. 
I uh, I don't know why the cobblestone bees go in there when there's nothing they can do in there because there's no nectar blocks. They just take up space unnecessarily. Of course, we uh, would ideally take those uh, cobblestone bees and put them back in over here. We're also not too far away from being able to uh, to kind of upgrade our hives to tier three as well because for that, we just need the four blocks of beeswax and four blocks of honeycomb. And we're actually pretty close on the four blocks of, uh, of iron honeycomb as well. So that's definitely something that we should uh, that we should look at doing. You are ready to go. Let's do this and let's do this. Perfect. That's going to get us yet another copper bee. And so now I'm going to do the exact same thing really that we did with nickel bees, but we're going to do them with copper bees. Oh, of course, the uh, the cobblestone bees are, uh, are pollinating on the walls. I did not even think about that. That uh, makes a bit more sense as to why they're going into the hive and we're actually getting some uh, cobblestone honeycomb out of here. But uh, now we should slowly but surely start to get some copper honeycombs and the next bee on our list here is the gold bee. And in order to get the gold bee, we need to breed a copper bee with a cobble bee. And we also, I'm assuming for the gold bee here, need to get a gold nectar block, which you guessed it, is two of the copper honeycomb blocks with two cobblestone honeycomb blocks. It's the exact same setup again. And so, yeah, we're just going to do what we've done with nickel, but with copper. Real quick, I'm going to use four blocks of uh, iron honeycomb here. That is quite a bit of iron we're going to spend, but I think it's probably worth it to get the hive upgrade here. That being this one, and we're going to upgrade the uh, the one that's currently being used for nickel and copper and also cobblestone as well. So let's just quickly give this a right click right about. I'm going to harvest it first, actually, and then we'll go ahead and right click like that. And hopefully that works. It's still showing as a tier two beehive, which is not filling me with confidence that that actually worked. You can tell it's working because at the top there it says bees eight, and you'll see that uh, right here the tier two hive can only hold six bees, whereas the tier three can hold eight. So it's not updating at the top, and the texture's not really updated as we'd expect, but it is indeed working. There are more bees in there, and I think we are getting the effects that uh, that we expect to get. All right, so we're still breeding the bees away, but we do now have a little bit of copper here, and so we can kind of pivot back over to making our full-on smeltery. If we smelt four copper ingots in the melter here, that should be enough for us to make the controller. This is three ingots, we'll put one more in there. And back over on the Tinker's Construct quest line, we should now be able to make the smeltery controller by pulling the molten copper over the seared heater. I am fairly certain that we can take this seared heater here. That should leave all the copper in the top melter. It does, and then if we put this in here and pull this over, that should give us the smeltery controller, and that's going to allow us to make a, a full-on tinker smeltery. It looks like I did not put anywhere near enough fuel in here. That is my bad. Let me get a few more oak logs here, and let's get uh, even more fuel going into both of these because we are going to need way more seared bricks than we currently have. But now that we have the controller, we can actually build a, a real smeltery. So do we not have... We've got a little bit more in the way of seared brick up here because we're going to need quite a bit of these blocks. We also do need to make, at the very least, a, a seared fluid tank and a seared drain. The quest here wants us to make two. Right now, we don't have the copper to make two, but I think two would be sensible because the more seared drains that we have, the faster we can pull the glass out of the smeltery, which means the quicker we can kind of build up our bee boxes. So let's do one of these to get the drain, and then let's see about putting this together. So we can make a smeltery that's very small, but a very small smeltery is going to give us essentially the same kind of performance that we got over here. And so I think ideally, we want to at the very least make a smeltery that's got a three by three internal size. And uh, what I mean by that is that we want to put the smeltery down. And I'm going to put it in this corner, I think, for now. We'll put it down. We're going to move this torch as well. What we'll do is we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like this. And then the controller is going to go down right about here like this and we need to put down more seared bricks around this smeltery level to make this work i'm also going to put down the tank i'm going to put it down right about here these can go anywhere by the way around the outside edge and you don't have to put down anything on the corners you just have to make sure that all of the pieces are in place and of course to make that work for us we're going to need even more of these seared bricks and we're just going to go ahead and do stuff like this and then like this so you can ignore these corner pieces we just need to get seared bricks on all of the sides and then like i said ideally we'd get two drains for two drains we need one more copper but i have a feeling that we should be very close to our next harvest over here we are indeed let's take that and that does get us even more copper honeycomb and so let's take that quickly going that down and that should be everything for two drains 
one and two. Fantastic. Uh, these do also give us blocks to fill in the smelter here. I'm going to put the drains right at the front for the time being. We'll put them here and here like that. And then we can go ahead and replace the blocks over here. We can craft up even more seared brick. And we're close to having enough here. We can do one, two, three, like that. Uh, we just need two more blocks. So we need six more seared brick. Fantastic. Would you look at that? Perfect. So let's do this. And then over here, if we put down these last two blocks, we should see, and it does show you in red where the next block needs to go, but uh, we should hopefully see the smeltery form. Nice. And so now in here, not only do we have a bit more space, so now if we take uh, some of our apparently non-existent sand, we've got 16 here, that's perfect. Let me take another stack of gravel out of here and get that going over in here just to get us even more sand. But now over in here, we can put in a, a bunch of sand, like so. And of course, we do need to give this fuel. This is gonna take fuel in the form of a lava. So we're gonna take this lava here and put it in the tank at the back. Then it should start smelting down all of the glass. Again, the reason it's faster now is just it's gonna smelt more at a time, which is fantastic. Then we need to extract that glass in much the same way that we did over here. So we need to take our seared faucet and we need to pump the glass down into the basin. And then from there, I think it's gonna be sensible for us to maybe steal this hopper here. Speaking of which, we can take this down for now. I don't think we really, whoops. I forgot that the lava was one block further up. That is my bad. I thought the lava was uh, directly above the stone. We can uh, take this and we can put this back in here for now. I'm gonna steal this hopper because the hopper here is going to allow us to, uh, to automate this production. So let's also do that real quick as well, just to make this a little bit faster. But uh, if we place all of this junk away into one of our chests, we can then put the hopper itself directly beneath the casting basin. The benefit of that, and we can also actually have that feed into a chest if we wanted to now that I think about it. Let's do something like this and let's do another kind of backup plan like we did last time so that we can get that hopper back should we want it in the future. Let's also try very much so to not fall into the abyss. Basically what I'm thinking here is that if we were to grab two more logs, we can make another chest and then we could just have the hopper feed kind of directly into a chest right about here if we did something like that, fantastic. And then we can do this as well. And so now if we pull the glass out like this, the glass is gonna cool and it's gonna get put directly into that chest. From there, we would need some kind of redstone signal. I don't think just putting a lever on here works, unfortunately. I think uh, putting a lever on there will trigger it to work, but I don't think it will pull out continuously. I think for that, we would need some kind of like pulsing redstone clock or repeater or something like that. Let me give uh, this a try. That does pull it out, but I think as soon as that first one is done, I think it's gonna stop. Never mind, it totally works. Cool, that's gonna continuously produce clear glass for us. That is perfect. And on top of that, I think we might also be able to, uh, to hopper into the controller. If that works, that's gonna be perfect. Although I think we might need a, um, a different kind of drain for that. If I do this and this, Oh, no, it totally works. Nice, cool. So we can just throw the sand into the hopper there, and then that sand is going to get smelted and pulled out. Perfect. That's going to take a little bit of time, of course, but it is now fully automated, and so eventually we should have enough clear glass to start replacing all of the uh, the horrendous cobblestone that we have over on the other side of the base. On top of that, I think we can do some automation here to automate the sand. I noticed that we did have uppers available. These are just hoppers that are kind of built backwards. For the upper, the only thing we're currently missing is iron. And of course we can get more iron using our mechanical centrifuge here. The idea being that if we can get five more iron, we can hopefully produce one of those uppers. And then we can at that point kind of automatically extract cobblestone from our cobblestone generator like this. And then we can place that crusher directly above the hopper or the upper, and that's gonna automatically produce gravel for us. And then if we were to get another upper after that, we could of course do the same again, turning gravel automatically into sand, which might not be a terrible idea. This totally works, nice, because of course the cobblestone is free and infinite. Uh, can I craft a hopper into an upper? I totally can, fantastic. I did think that was a possibility for us. So if we take this, that should just give us a backlog of sand and gravel that we can kind of perpetually tap into. It is gonna make it a little difficult to get, to the sand and gravel because it's so far up in the sky now, but that is gonna automatically produce both sand and gravel for us. And we can just take that sand, of course, and drop it in to this hopper over here. And that's going to very slowly but surely get turned into clear glass. The tricky part then is potentially lava being a problem. Although 
I do think that we have basically unlimited lava, right? Because lava we can make utilizing the jars and cobblestone with high temperature. So if I take a, a few stacks of cobblestone here and I go put those into this chest, we can then go ahead and in here, cancel that and type in lava and we can start turning cobblestone into lava at a fairly decent rate. Two minutes per is not massively fast, but I don't know if this is using more than one bucket every two minutes. I'm not entirely certain, but this is coming in and hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll have enough to actually start to replace the horrible cobblestone walls that we have here. Uh, speaking of which over here, let me do another shear, not another gravel placement. And I'm not quite sure how well we're doing on uh, copper bees. Like I don't know how fully grown they are, but uh, as soon as they are fully grown, we will look at uh, combining those with the cobblestone bee to get the gold bee. All right, I think we're ready to go here. We've got a uh, copper bee and a cobblestone bee. And we also have another copper bee and another cobblestone bee. Nice. Look at that, gold bees. Perfect. Okay, so we're getting somewhere slowly but surely. Uh, we still don't have enough nectar blocks, unfortunately. Let's do this uh, and get all those. We've got three copper honeycomb, which is not a tremendous amount. That's probably due to the fact that we only have two uh, two copper bees, of course. And so uh, we could probably do with increasing the number of copper bees here, uh, maybe moving those gold bees temporarily because they're not doing anything just yet. And uh, also maybe moving the cobblestone bees back as well once we've used them to make more copper bees. But uh, we could do with more copper honeycomb. Of course, that copper honeycomb is going to be necessary in order to get the uh, gold nectar block. But we're getting somewhere a little bit. Next up, we need to get the cinnabar bee. The cinnabar bee here is uh, cobblestone and gold. So we have to breed these two together to get the uh, cinnabar B, that cinnabar B is going to get a cinnabar, which I don't think is particularly useful for us. However, it is the gateway to the redstone B. The redstone B is really what we're after here. All right, not too long later again, we now have uh, 18 copper honeycomb, which is perfect. And uh, we've also started building out our second box here. I've replaced the cobblestone. We've started putting down the clear glass. It's going to look a lot nicer. I've also built a nice big uh, honey glass door there so we can walk in and out much more easily. But back over here now, we should be able to get two more of these uh, cobblestone honeycomb blocks as well as uh, two more of these copper honeycomb blocks. Of course, place those in here. The only trouble we're gonna run into now is that we don't have any honey because I turned all my honey into honey glass. However, we do now have a lot of honeycombs and so hopefully getting two more honey bottles shouldn't take too, too long here. There's one and if I could get one more, perfect. We can then craft that of course with our bucket just like we've done before. Boom and boom. Perfect, a little bit of a visual glitch there but that worked just fine and then we'll put you in there and then back over here, we should then be able to get the gold nectar block, which is this one. Perfect, start. And that's going to allow us to make the uh, gold honeycomb from the gold bees. The gold bees are pretty good. They are less than 10 minutes away from being uh, fully grown gold bees, which is, uh, is perfect as well. And of course we can breed more of those with uh, copper and cobble. And then we'll take the gold bees, we'll breed those with cobblestone, of course, once we start getting the gold honeycomb and therefore the gold ingots, and that's gonna get a cinnabar, and then we'll rinse and repeat with cinnabar to get redstone. All right, so a lot of the same kind of stuff later, and we are now on the brink of redstone bees. You'll see that we are not very far away. This bee here has got 102 seconds left on its growth, but I think we have two more cinnabar bees in this tier three beehive that are maybe like 30 seconds away from being fully grown. Your 500, your fully grown, which is perfect. Never mind. I guess we've got 500. We've got 500. This guy's done. The guy in there's got like 100 seconds left. That's cool. So I bred the gold bees. I got more gold bees. I then bred the gold bees with the cobble bees to get the cinnabar bees. And then it was the same process for making the cinnabar nectar block. We just got 18 of the gold honeycomb and 18 cobbled honeycomb. Combine those together and that got us the cinnabar nectar block. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing here. We're gonna take 18 uh, cobble honeycomb to get uh, two cobblestone honeycomb blocks. We're gonna take 18 cinnabar to get again two cinnabar honeycomb blocks. We're gonna put both of those over into this chest, making sure that this is turned off. Let's do you and you. And then just like before, we need to get some honey, which we are pretty close to getting. We can take some gold here from these honeycombs and that's going to get us the redstone nectar block which is really what we've been working for here because the redstone nectar block is of course going to allow us to use redstone bees to generate a redstone and redstone's a key milestone because it's going to allow us to finally look at actually automating a lot of this uh, stuff here so redstone nectar it's redstone bee nectar is what we need this one right here start that's going to take one minute by the time that one minute is up, we should be able, I think, to get our first two redstone bees. As far as getting those though, we are also gonna need to get some uh, cinnabar so that we can actually breed the cinnabar bee with the cobblestone bee to get 
the redstone. So let's go ahead and grind that all down. In the time it's taken to do all that, I have gone ahead and got even more of the clear glass, which is still coming through over here. And I've gone ahead and uh, made both of these look a little bit nicer. And so let's take this cinnabar. We do have cobblestone on us. Our cobblestone bees are still in this area over here, but currently there's no cobblestone left. So right now they're, uh, they're not actually making any combs, but uh, over here, cool. We do now have two fully grown cinnabar bees, which is perfect. Let's uh, continue to shear this to get even more comb as we go. And, oh, we do already have one cobblestone bee in here. So let's do this and let's do this. That should get us our first redstone bee, ideally. It did indeed, fantastic, look at that. And then hopefully we can take this cobblestone bee away because he is kind of useless at this point. We'll bring him back over here. I think we have another cobblestone bee in here. I'm fairly certain there's one inside of our hive. Let's go ahead and harvest all of these as well. And as soon as he comes out, we can move him over and get our other redstone bee, at which point we can of course take our redstone nectar and we're kind of running out of inventory space here, which is not ideal, but we can put this down inside with the cinnabar and with the gold. I'm not really interested in more cinnabar combs, so we can probably start packing up some of the uh, the cinnabar bees uh, once we've, we've bred them to get redstone bees. Okay, so I think I actually lost all my other cobblestone bees. We did have another slight incident with, uh, with one of the bees dying. That's fine. Uh, making cobblestone bees is super easy. And so here we'll do this, and we will do the other cinnabar bee who I think is currently hidden away inside. That's fine, it'll pop out any second. Now there's our first redstone honeycomb, I think. It is indeed fantastic. Uh, are you ready? You are ready. Let's do this. That's gonna get us our second redstone bee, perfect. And then from there, we can just kind of breed those together if we want. And of course we can keep breeding with the cobblestone bees uh, and the cinnabar bees as well. I'm gonna get rid of the cinnabar nectar block. That is gonna give the, you gotta be careful breaking stuff in here as well. Cause if you hit the bees, they do not like it. But uh, if we get rid of that, that's not gonna give the cinnabar bees anything to do but it, uh, it is gonna reduce the amount of cinnabar that we get out of the hive, which I think is perfect, because at this point, I really just want the redstone uh, honeycomb more than anything else, and uh, getting gold as well is also fine, but the redstone honeycomb is ideal, uh, because of course that is going to allow us to make actual redstone, and that actual redstone is going to allow us to do some automation, which is uh, kind of gonna be, I think, our main uh, goal for the next episode. We'll come back and we'll look at utilizing this redstone here to automate uh, the process of harvesting the combs because what we can do is and actually we can do this with just one redstone is that we can make a dispenser and the dispenser does require some string that's fine in fact i think we have three string we do indeed and we also have the sticks to make a bow that's fine let's do this and let's do this the benefit of the dispenser is that we can use it to automatically harvest the hive for us without us having to do it ourselves do it manually and the way that we do that is we can point the dispenser at the hive. I'm just thinking about what the best way to do this is gonna be, because I don't think we can rotate this particularly easily. Uh, let me do, I also don't want to, uh, to let my bees out, but I kinda wanna get this uh, dispenser down, like right here, like this, perfect, I think that's good. And then we'll put the clear glass back down like that. And then now, over the back, you'll see that this is ready to go. So what we should be able to do, we should be able to put, for example, our shears into here. And then if we get apply a redstone signal to this, it's gonna automatically harvest all the combs. Nice. And so the idea is, and what we're gonna try and set up, I think in the next episode, we're going to try and automatically apply a redstone signal to this dispenser. There are a few ways you can do it. You can do it with a comparator that reads the hive so that you can kind of automatically do it whenever the hive is ready to be harvested. You can also do it with like a timer or like a repeating redstone signal. Uh, a couple of people have suggested like two observers pointing at each other that re uh, creates like a repeating redstone signal. There's also just the timer from RF Tools Utility here, which also emits a constant redstone signal. That way it's kind of just gonna do this over and over again, kind of constantly trying and trying and trying until it's actually ready to harvest, at which point it will harvest it. And then from there, we're also going to need to look at collecting those, right? Because of course, once all of the honeycombs are out, the next thing we need to do is pick them all up and then send them over to a centrifuge. And so once we've got that kind of automation up and running, we're gonna have to look at collecting the combs and then processing them probably into an actual centrifuge that can do it automatically. So we don't have to stand and manually crank the manual centrifuge over and over and over again to get all of our resources. And then from there, we could look at uh, taking all those resources and kind of putting them into a chest or into the storage drawers for us to use going forward. But for now, we're unfortunately out of time for this episode of Sky Bees 2.